this is the Christian Circle Podcast and you're listening to Pamela Fernandez where we have conversations about Christian living. Here's the show. Welcome to a new episode of the Christian Circle Podcast and we have a new guest today, Michelle Fritz. Uh, Michelle, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your ministry? Sure. Um, I'm a homeschooling mom. I have 11 children. I've been married for about 29 years, or almost 29 years. I have a bachelor's degree in psychology and a master's in theology. Um, I'm a youth minister for our church. I run our middle school and high school youth groups. And in my free time, I'm writing a couple different books. Uh, One is on finding your way through grief and discovering that there can still be joy in your life after you've been through, through loss. And the second is on how to maintain your sanity and find joy while parenting. Um, I would say my overall ministry is helping to bring joy to others, whether it's through good works, funny stories on Facebook, volunteering, uh, or through my writing. And I just really try to remind people that there's so much in life to be thankful for and that when we're thankful, we find true happiness and peace. And we're actually coming off uh, Thanksgiving week. It's, it's actually still Thanksgiving weekend. And um, the reason I contacted you was because you wrote this amazing post on Catholic Stand about being thankful. So why do we need to be thankful? I think that's a really, really great question. Um, I view everything in my life through a lens of faith. So to be thankful shows that God... Um, shows shows that I am am happy that God has continued to bless me. And a lot of times, I think as Christians, we forget that we're still called to be thankful to God, even for the littlest things. Um, in my article I wrote, uh, I, I guess it was, it was being thankful in everything. Sometimes we experience it's a lot of hardship in our life, and it's very easy to come away with um, losing that that thankfulness. And we we think God has abandoned us, and He hasn't, and He's still there, and He calls us to be thankful in everything, in our happiness and our sorrows. Um, and when we continue to be thankful, God continues to be to to shower graces upon us, and it helps us to get through those hard times. Um, I think that a lot of times we don't we just we don't recognize that when we when we are not thankful, life is just so much harder. Um, and as Christians, we're called to be thankful. Um, also, science tells us that people who are thankful are happier. You know, so not only do we have God telling us that, gosh, if you're if you're thankful for the things that I've given you and you express gratitude, that in the end you'll be happier. But then science backs this up. Science says that people who are who are grateful tend to live happier, healthier lives. Um, So it's important to be thankful. It's important to show God that you appreciate everything that he's given you. But it's also important for our just our general well-being. How does gratitude change us then? I know there is a book by Merlin Carothers uh, about, you know, power to praise. And there was this huge um, uh, appreciation for his books. He he became a best-selling author. And he said that gratitude changes us first as people. So how does gratitude really change us? I am constantly telling my children, um, you become what you surround yourself with. Mm. And a lot of times in the context of my kids, I'm talking about, um, you know, their choices of doing the right thing, of surrounding themselves with good people. Um, You know, if you you surround yourself with hateful people, you're going to become a hateful person. But if you surround yourself with goodness and gratitude, you become that very thing. You become grateful. You become good. And the more you surround yourself with gratitude, the more you're able to see the good in situations Mm -hmm. um, or in people. You know, gosh, a lot of times we we look at people, we go, gosh, they're a troublemaker or Mm -hmm. they they really, really bother me. And instead of seeing the good in those people, we see the bad. But 
when you become a grateful person who constantly looks for the good in things, you begin to see the good in in all of those situations and your entire life attitude can change. Um, on top of that, the more you look for goodness and the more you are grateful, the easier that those hard times that you experience um, will be. It's not that you won't have difficult times, but you'll be able to get through them easier. Gratitude helps us become holy people that Christ calls us to be. And when we look for the good in a situation or a person, what we're actually doing is looking for Christ in that situation or person. Um, and we're able to draw closer to him the more we look for him. I recently read something that said, um, you know, God is bigger the closer you are to him. You know, if you look at a, a an airplane up in the sky, it looks tiny. Yeah. But if you're if it's on the ground and you're right next to it, it looks huge. Mm. And that that's how God is as well. The more grateful we are in our lives, and the more we we see the blessings that God has given us, the more we draw closer to Him. Mm. Um, and the more grateful we are, the more we find Christ right there beside us. That's an actually amazing way of looking at it. it it's, it's helped me um, when we've experienced some really, really difficult times in our lives um, and I feel alone or, you know, forgotten. And the more I look for God and I look for the good and I am thankful for those, for those blessings, the more I feel God is next to me and the more I know that I'm not abandoned and I'm not, I know I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. um, and it just, it really, really helps you get through all of those difficult times and all of the, all, all of the things we're going to encounter because we know that God didn't promise us a trouble-free life. Yeah. Um, he, tr he promised us a life of, of love and, and security within him, but that doesn't mean that trouble is not going to come. Um, the closer we are to him, the, the better and the easier time we'll have getting through those times. A grateful heart allows us to see God even in those difficult times, um, even, in, even in the times where it feels like, gosh, where are you, Lord? You know. Mm -hmm. um, and so being grateful and being thankful at all times helps you to feel closer to God. You wrote a number of things about how to live a thankful life, and I think this is uh, important because it's it's not something that happens spontaneously. We have to, uh, I think, initially we have to intentionally be grateful till it becomes a second nature or it becomes a habit to us. So, how do we live a thankful life? What are the small things we can do to increase gratitude in our life? I think you're absolutely right. I think a lot of times it doesn't come easy to everyone. I think there's there's people who struggle far more with being grateful than others, and it might be their life circumstances, it might be their upbringing. Maybe they weren't taught from an early age to be to be grateful. Um, I think the easiest way to begin to live a grateful life or a thankful life is to simply say thank you mm -hmm. to others, to God first through prayer, but then also to others when someone opens the door for you, smiling at them and saying thank you goes a long way um, when when someone does something nice for you whether it's your spouse or your child or a friend stranger somebody at a drive through simply saying thank you goes a long way those two little words are life-changing um, but some of the other ways I think that you can live a life of, of Thanksgiving and gratitude um, and spread joy to others at the same time is a really simple one is to just smile Mm -hmm. um, a smile can go a long way to show how grateful you are for what God's given you. And I can't tell you how many times that I've been at a store and I've looked at someone and just simply smiled mm -hmm. and they suddenly smile. It makes their day. Mm -hmm. um, a smile brings joy to others and can change their outlook. And when we're joyful, we're more thankful. Um, and it's, it's like that, that little match that starts the the chain of light that floods the room. Um, you know, just a simple act like smiling. Uh, something that our family does a lot of um, are random acts of kindness. 
Um, when we do for others, we tend to feel more joyful. And when we're joyful, it's easy to be thankful. Um, so doing a small act of kindness, paying for the meal of someone behind you, um, opening a door for someone. My family, um, at one point, we, we decided we would stand on a busy street corner with signs that said things like, you are beautiful, you can do this, God loves you. Um, reminding people they're important. Mm -hmm. All we did was stand there, we didn't say anything. The joy it brought people was amazing. Um, and I have no doubt that those people then were able to, to maybe find a little bit of things to be thankful for in their life, even if they were going through difficult times. So random acts of kindness are in a tremendous way of showing that you're thankful for what God has given you and then it helps others become thankful maybe for the little act of kindness that you've given them. Um, and in the same line of that, volunteering, volunteering to help others in need um, can help us to understand how blessed we are. A lot of times we take for granted the things that we have in our lives and seeing how little others have or helping them to obtain the things that they truly need goes a long ways to helping us feel and understand why we should be thankful for all of the gifts that we have in our lives. Um, I can't stress volunteering enough. It's, it's crucial not only to our community, but to our own lives to give back when we know we've been given so much. Um, having a gratitude journal, I think this one is vital, especially when you're going through like a, a, a rough time. It can be hard to be thankful in the midst of a terrible storm. Um, and when we're hurting and we feel abandoned by God, it can be next to impossible to find something to be thankful for. But writing down, gosh, I'm thankful that I got a hug from my daughter tonight. I'm thankful that the sun was shining today, Lord, can remind us that God is there even in the middle of suffering. And for me, when I've gone through difficult times, that has been crucial to keeping me on, you know, keeping my eyes set straight ahead and not wandering off the path because God, God is always there, even when we, when we can't see him because everything else is clouding our vision. Um, so being writing in a, a gratitude journal is great. It's a great way to keep us focused on on all of the goodness that's still in our lives. Um, and I think the last thing, or, or one of the last things, is praying. Praying in Thanksgiving each and every day. Um, a lot of times when we go to God, we go to God saying, oh, you know, Lord, I need this. Um, Lord, why didn't this happen for me? And instead, our first prayer should always be a prayer of thanksgiving. Um, you know, he loves us so much and he wants us to be happy and he wants us to be peaceful. And so he's given us so much. Um, and I think about, I think about my own life and, you know, each day we eat supper as a family, no matter what time of day it is, you know, if, if we wait till my husband's done working um, and we sit down as a family to eat. And I'm typically the person who, makes all of the food and serves it. And we, we sit down and we pray and we thank God for the food and for each other. And then my children, and I didn't start this, they started it on their own. They start to thank me. Thank you, mama, thank you for dinner. And that little bit of gratitude towards me just absolutely makes my day. And so I think about God and I think about how much we often just go to him going, Lord, I need this but how much joy it must bring him when we go to him in Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. You know, so pr prayer is vital. Prayer is just an amazing way to live a thankful life. And I'm glad you mentioned uh, volunteering because um, I've been volunteering for the last few months now. And initially I started off with, you know, what can I get from this? And a few days ago, somebody told me, well, uh, you're not getting anything out of this. Why even continue doing this? And the thing is, volunteering has brought me a lot of joy, so much joy that you can give something of yourself, knowing that somehow you won't be able to get anything out of it, but that you've given away, you know? And, and, and I encourage people 
people that if you could go to hospitals, go to your churches and, and do any small thing, even if it could be stacking up chairs, just go do it. Absolutely. We are, as a family, we do a lot of volunteering, but as a youth minister, um, I take our kids on mission trips. Um, and we volunteer in our, just in our local community as well. And one of the things I always tell to the kids is the best volunteer opportunities you have um, and the ones that will bring you the most joy are the ones where you give something to someone with no expectation in return um, and you're helping people who absolutely can't give anything back to you. You know, it's this, this pure joy of giving and this love that you're you're giving to them you know you're being christ's hands and feet in the world and that's what we're called to do and they don't understand it until yeah. they are there doing it how much joy it brings you know and how much more it helps them realize wow i really am blessed and i really should be sharing this blessings and this joy that god has given with others. You know, so volunteering is just an amazing opportunity to become a more thankful person and a more joyful person. Now it's easy to actually be thankful when you know everything's all right, you're, you're in that um, in your comfort zone, things are okay, your life is fine. But what would you say to people who are struggling, you know, people who are finding it difficult to make ends meet, those who are unemployed, those who are grieving, uh, or who are struggling with an illness, or you know, a, a kind of difficult life. How would you tell these people um, to incorporate gratitude or to somehow be able to find that space? The first thing I would say is that it's okay that you're struggling to be thankful. Um, we are human and we we can't see the full plan that God has before him. So it's, it's okay for us to be um, worried, upset, when we're struggling the important thing to know is that god has this and that god is there and god does have a plan even though we don't understand it and so i would say trust trust in god trust in christ um and wonder what in the world his plans are and why they include suffering but don't give up hope um it's hard to see the light your knee deep um in, in worries and struggles and when you just can't see the light yet. Um, I can give an example. When our baby William died, I suffered in a way that I never could have imagined possible. And I couldn't understand why God would allow me to go through what we did. But what really helped me get through that was to look for the good people and for what they did for me. So there was a nurse who was so tender while she was cleaning my hands. Um, or a woman who didn't know me very well, but came to came to the graveside with us to stand when we buried our son, mm -hmm. when no other family or friends showed up, um, or listening at the, the laughter of my children as we still, still celebrated the holidays, uh, or a group of online friends who checked up on me. When I focused on the good things and the good people, I realized that there was so much to be thankful for, even though I was hurting. So when you can't see that light, um, when you can't, you know, you just can't make heads or tails of what's going on in your life, looking for the good in people um, and the good in your surroundings will help you understand that God is still so very good and life can still be good, even though your heart is breaking or you're not sure you know, how you're going to feed your children or um, it, why something has happened in your life or whatever the circumstances may be. Having hope and finding good in people and in, in situations. Um, I think it was Mr. Rogers who said, look for the good people. You know, when something bad happens, look for the good people. And they're always, or the helpers, I guess. And they're always there. God always sends these people into our life to be there for us, to show us that he's still walking beside us. Um, so not giving up hope um, and knowing that that the sun will shine again and you will find that light once again. Um, I would also say if you're struggling, 
reach out to a trusted friend or your pastor, someone um, who can help you walk through this. Sometimes having others remind us of what is still good in our life helps, helps us to get through that situation and helps us to be thankful even in that difficult time. Well, thank you so much for sharing everything about gratitude and especially on this weekend of Thanksgiving for making the time to talk to us. Any last words that you have, Michelle, that you want to share with everybody? Um, I would just say that, you know, when life is tough and when life seems like it's just overwhelming, turning to God with a grateful heart for the things that you you can find that are still good in your life is just vital. It helps you be joyful and um, I, I think being being joyful helps us to spread God's love and that as Christians that's what we're called to do we're called to be Christ's hands and feet in the world and we're called to share his love um, and the best way to do that is by becoming grateful people who then become joyful people so where can people find you online um, or your website so that people can reach out to you if they have any questions well, my personal website is called Tales from the Side of the Tub. Um, so it's Tales from the Side of the Tub dot com. And there I write about my faith, about my family. I share funny stories, um, prayers, insights. Uh, I write for a couple different Catholic websites. You can find me at Catholic Sisters. Um, and that's with an A-S, not an E-R-S. You can find me on Instagram and uh thank you so much for joining us uh are you on facebook or twitter i'm on facebook and that's tales from the side of the tub okay. and you can find me there and i'm on instagram on tales from the side of the tub but not on twitter okay all right so thank you so much michelle um and hopefully we'll have you back soon for another podcast later in this the next year <laughs> Well, thank you. I appreciate I appreciate being able to to come on and talk, and and uh, I appreciate what you are doing as well to spread God's love and to encourage Christians in their journey towards towards a, a life in Christ.